we start off, we'll put all of our code in here. So, we're trying to, what are we trying to do here? Step two, add pups to dog bar. That's what we're trying to do here, right? We got to make a div that shows us all of the dogs, right? Make a fetch to get all of the pup objects. So how can I start with this? Uh, if you make the query selector, uh, since they're, they're telling you already that it's that VAB just go for the IP. Where? Document that get over by any dog What am I putting in here? Exactly. Thank you. All right. Let's test if this works. So we're getting a thing. This is what we want. Should we save it in a variable? Why is it important to save it in a variable? All right. Cool. All right, now how do we load the dogs into this bar? Like, what's the next thing we need to do? Uh, do you get a random fetch? Mm -hmm. Should I make that in its own function or just do it out here? Its own function. All right, what should I call it? Fetch dogs. All right. Well, we should set a variable for the dog URL first of all, right underneath where it says dog bar. You don't have to do that, but if you insist, you can do that as well. Uh, whatever the URL is, you're, you, you know, you're driving My dog. Slash pops. <coughs> Alright, cool. So what is our fetch going to do? R? R dot JSON. All right, let's see what that gives us. All right, I'm hearing some predictions. What else do I need to do in order to see this already? Yeah, exactly. So we need to invoke this function. All right. So now we're getting an array of all of the dogs. What do we need to do with each of these dogs? Random them to the dog bar. Exactly. So what's a good way to do that? Uh, you can make another function mm -hmm. called render dog. Render dog? Yeah, why not? So toward just one? Yes. And then it's going to take, this is where we are going to differ. It's going to take in an argument of dog. We don't differ here at all. I love this idea. Uh, and then you're going to you know, do the guts of that function, and then you're going to have another function called render dogs with an S. And then you're going to take in dogs, and then your dot then where it says console log, you're going to say render dogs. OK, so if I'm understanding you correctly, first thing I'm going to do is fetch all of the dogs. Yes. Then I'm going to make a function that takes the result yeah. of all of these dogs yeah. called render dogs, and that function is going to render one dog at a time. In theory. OK, I can do that. So maybe render, render dogs. dogs. Yeah, takes in dogs. Mm -hmm. So let's think about naming for a little bit. There's going to be a place in our application where we actually show information about one dog, and that's going to be that's going to be this. So when you tell me render dog, I kind of think about this. But what we're trying to accomplish right now is add one dog to the span or like you to just, the dog you bar. You call it like render dog bar, and then only render the names. Yeah. So let's call it render dog bar. So this function is going to use all of the dogs and construct our bar for us. Put all of the dogs on that bar. And this function is going to add 
one dog to that bar, right? This is for when we first load our page, we want to show up a bar like this because right now we're getting nothing. So when our page first loads on DOM content loaded, what we need to do is grab all of the dogs and show their names up here. So the way that we've broken this up is fetch all of the dogs and then have a function that takes care of the rendering one at a time. And then a function that this is the one that makes one span. And then this one is going to do it over and over again for every single dog that we have. So where should I start? What should this one be doing? Uh, the render dog bar function should be like dogs dot for each and dog to dog bar. And what is dogs going to be? Dogs is going to be that array that we got. All right. So dogs is going to be an array of objects. We have access to this inside of our function because it's being passed in. So for each of these dogs, okay, we're going to use this function that's going to put that dog onto the dog bar. Is everyone okay with this idea? I mean, wouldn't, can't you just do that in the band, like instead of having all the separate functions? You can, but we're just breaking it up into like different functionality, and each function is like doing a different thing. So this one is only fetching, uh, and then this one is rendering everything, and then this one's going to put one thing into our div. Well, isn't, okay, but the first one is also doing putting our dog. Yeah, so this is giving us an array of all of the dogs. Okay. Sometimes it's good to like but break things up. Also, it's like dog arrow add dog. You don't need that. You can just write add dog to dog bar and then right. You can. I just want to make sure everyone understands this syntax. Okay. Because with a for each, we're taking each thing that we're looping over and then we're calling our function and doing dog. But as Danny mentioned, when you have functions like this, for each that expect one argument, you can just pass it a callback that we know expects one argument, and it's going to pass that one argument automatically. So it's just like two different ways to do things. All right. So how are we doing this part? What do we need to do here? You need to make any are they, are the buttons spans? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that's what this part says. You need to add a span with the dog's name to the dog bar, and this is what it should look like. So you want a document that create element span. But you can also set that to a variable. Mm -hmm. And then what is our span going to show? How do we basically we construct this? Do you need parentheses or do you have to be Whoops. Parentheses. So we need to basically construct this. Uh, there's nothing inside of it, so you can just say like span dot inner text. Equals <coughs> dog dot name. Assuming that it's called name and not. Well let's check the database. This is what one dog looks like. So we can do dog.name. Is that all we need to do? Yeah, so we have to put this one dog onto the DOM. And where are we adding it? Yeah, and since we defined this outside of this function, we can just pull it in and use the dog bar. How do we append? All right, how do we put this into action and like check that it's working? 
now that we have these three functions that kind of help each well, other. Well, you could do um, your fetch at another dot then, and then just tell it to run your dog bar. The same way that we're telling it for each at a dog and dog bar. Like in another dot then. Where? Underneath the one that already exists. This one? Yeah, yeah, just hit enter. You can do that. There's actually another way too. And I want you guys to get used to this idea as well. So this thing here, fetch dogs, is giving us all of our dogs, right? We can use this function and it's gonna give us a promise, right? And promises are chainable. So we can do like a dot then here and call this thing next if we wanted to. And this is like a situation where you would actually want to return the promise. Do you want to try that? Yes. Sure. Yeah, so what is this function giving us back? A promise that promises us what? Exactly, so this is promising us all of the dogs. And what can we do with our dogs? Where can we pass them? To render dog bar. It's just a different example for like you to see it. We can go back to the other example. I just want you to be also familiar how if this function returns a promise, we can also just chain it. So let's see if this does what we expect. It's giving us all the dogs. Pretty cool. Alternatively, you can just chain it here. And it's the same thing. You have to put render, or you have to put fetch dog back to top to come and do it all out. I do. And achieves the same thing. So just like keep these two things in mind. So let's go back to this way. So we have our first deliverable. Boom, done. Let's see what the next one is. Finish two things already. What was the first? How to view the data, how to use the database, basically. Okay. All right, now the fun begins. We're gonna see the information about an individual dog. So that's gonna be like this part of the page, where when you click on one dog, this appears. And it's information that pertains to that one dog. So when you click the span, you get the image, the name, and the is good dog status which basically tells you if the dog is a good dog or a bad dog. And this part is very important because it tells you like how this should look, especially because there's some styling involved. So we wanna make sure we're doing it the right way. So I'll just add this in here. All right, how can we approach step three? What do we need in order to accomplish this? I mean, you need an event listener on each of these spans. Mm -hmm. So where can I put that? I would put it in the um, place, more place, into the add dog to bar function. I love that idea. So every time you're making a span, you can put an event listener directly on that span, okay? So we can do like span, add event listener. But we need some kind of, yeah. And then I would put a function that was just like, you know, show dog, show dog page. Like, just put that in there and say that again, add dog to dog bar. Yeah, so, Let's think about what we're trying to accomplish when we click on one of these dog names. Yes? What else? You could do a click 
click and you do what else? You can do submit for forms. Okay. You can do click. You can do DOM content loaded. There's a bunch of other ones that we you haven't. Hover. You can do hover. You can or do mouse down. leave, mouse enter, mouse up, key up, key down. There's a bunch of ones. Oh, we're just going to probably come up. So can we do one on this that somebody's going to be like, I don't have idea. Can we do one on this that like as you hover over them, it cycles through them, but then the only way that it stays on it is if you actually click it? That's a hard one. <laughs> all right, let's not get our ahead of ourselves and just focus on the deliverables, all right? So when we're trying to click one of these, right now nothing happens. What we want to happen is to actually see information about that particular dog. So it makes sense to have a function that reacts to that click that shows us the information about that one dog. So what can we call that function? More specific, what are we doing after? Show dog page. All right, I like show dog info because it's not necessarily a new page. And what does this take? Um, to start, what I would do is I would just have it like console log, like some phrase, like, oh, cool dogs. And then put it in there so to make sure that it's all working. All right, so we're going to make sure that this event listener is actually connected. We have an event listener on our span, right? It reacts to a click. It's always a good idea to check if this event listener is actually connected. So when we do our show dog info, we can do like a simple console log. Show dog info is connected. So I click one. It's working. It's working for all of them. If I have a callback function that takes an event listener, or like a callback function that happens on an event, what does that function usually take as an argument? Event. Yeah. And how can we use this event to help us show the dog information? Dot what? So there's a way, there's always a way to get the dog off of this event. Event dot target dot. So you want to get to the ID. That is it. We want to get to the ID. Did we set an ID for each span? Uh, no. We did not. But you can also just go into it and be like ID equals dog dot ID. We like don't have access to it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why don't we, when we create our span, actually set that as an ID? We just put that show dog info function in before I add dog info function. I think it's a little bit messy mm -hmm. to do that. So I like the idea of like connecting a data ID onto our span. So how would we do that? Does anyone know? If we wanted to give this span the dog ID. Span Get there's one called set attribute that you can do. So this can help us set an attribute. And then the arguments would be what attribute we're trying to set. So what are we trying to give it? Data ID. Data ID. <coughs> and the other argument would be what? Exactly. So let's actually see that this works. Let's console log each of these spans. Cool. So now each of our spans is actually connected to a particular dog. So now when we're trying to show information about a particular dog, we can access that dog's ID right off of the like HTML element. So Jack, back to your idea. How do we get that dog from our event? Or at least its ID. Um, event Like this? Yeah, you can do it like this. You can also, instead of set attribute, there's something called get attribute. So there's like a lot of different ways to do things in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. You can do event.target. What does event.target give us? 
it gives us the thing that we clicked on, which is what kind of element? Well, let's check. Let's check before we do that. So I'm going to click on puddles. What should I see? Yeah, so I get the entire span. Let me just comment this out so it can be more clear. So that's the thing that I clicked on, is what comes up. So this is what I clicked on, and then you can do like get attribute data ID. Let's see if it works. So we're getting our ID. This should work the same way. So lots of different ways to do things in JavaScript. All right. So we have the ID of the dog. What do we need to do next? We want to show the information about that dog, right? But how do we get that information? Where's that information coming from? Let me give you a hint. That all our dogs, say we want to show information about a particular dog, Where's that information coming from? It's coming from here. What is this? It's our database. It's where we fetch things from, right? OK. So what should I do? So should we like send a kind of Mm -hmm. string it into our package. That's a great idea. Otherwise, we're just going to keep saying event target data set ID, which can be annoying. What should I call this variable? I love it. Cool. Now what? And then fetch. Mm -hmm. And then um, And our global URL mm -hmm. slash. All right, well, we do have a variable. That's the URL. So we can use that. Or we can just do the actual URL. Let's just do it this way, just so that everyone can see the different ways. Then what happens? Stringify it? How do we do it? What am I getting back from this promise? I get a response. Like this? Invoke it. Exactly. Let's confirm that we got the right object. All right, I click. Fido, I'm getting this object. All right, I have this object that I can work with. Now I just have to translate it onto the page. How do I do that? Can I just, so, before we go any further, go back to your book, can I give you an argument as to why you don't want to put that there? Like that, that URL? If that changes, then you have to go to the main menu. OK. That's why we set it to the variable. So that it's easier to call, and then if it were to ever change, you just change up. And everything else falls in the you can do that, but for our purposes, this URL is not going to change. And I do want to make sure people see different ways of doing things. All right. So how do we put this on the page? Let's see the readme. I love that idea. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. So 
we need to oh, find that's... where that goes on. Like there should be a container of some sort for it on the page, or if not, we can create one. Mm-hmm. Right. Does anyone know which container we're putting in? Yeah, that's why the README is so useful. It usually tells you exactly what you need to do and where you need to put the information. So this one. This information should show up in the div with the ID of dog info. That's a very big hint. That means there's a div with an ID of dog info, and that's where we throw, it, throw in this information. So since we know there's this div and we want to put our information here, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Where is the best place to do that? Okay. Why not? We might be using it more than once. Who knows? Dog info div. How do I select it? This thing. Yeah. All right. Let's make sure that it works. Good. Yep. All right, we got it. This is the div over here. That's where we're putting all of the, the information, slapping it on the DOM. Is there... Well, yes, Danny? I was going to say, is there styling over Right now is the whole page. Well, if you care about that, that wasn't in the instructions. It's just okay. telling you to do this information. I did investigate this, and I found that it's being styled already by its ID. So the styling will come into play on its own without us having to worry about it, as long as we're following the instructions to the T. All right. So this is what we got to do for each dog. How do we do this? Um, I would almost like want to, if possible, break up the function show dog info and just keep that as the fetch and then have another function that like actually comes into the page. And then your dot that the dot that console log, you can call it dot that whatever the other function is. We can. Again, there's a lot of different ways to do things. And like up here, we've broken things up into different places. For this one, I kind of want to like show that you can also keep going. So for this one, let's just keep going with what we have and put it on the DOM. You go. Do you always have to put headers? You um, only have to put headers when you're posting or patching something. Okay. And the headers are always going to be the same? The headers are, content type, so gonna be they're going to indicate what kind of data is on your body. And since it's JSON, that's why we usually do content type JSON. And then application. Not for these purposes. Okay. Okay. All right. So if I want to just put it on the DOM right here, what do I need to do? Would you like that then and then take it, um, take the response and then put it into like an uh, anonymous function or whatever that then kind of like edits the inner HTML. So what's the response coming through here? I mean, it's like this JSON file. What is this? What is this giving? If I console log? Exactly, the dog object. So what should I call this? You can call it anything. Dog. What do we want to do with that dog? How do we make it have its own little div? You can set the, well, what's our, what do we call our variable where the div is? Just, yeah. You can go dog, dog info, info div. div. And dot what are we putting in it? Dot enter HTML. And then equals the back ticks. And then just paste in that HTML view and comment that out. And then we can. Good start. 
All right, so we need particular information from the dog, right? So which parts need to be replaced? Okay, so what should I replace this with? So the JSON file has name, is good dog, and image. What else does it have? And what else? So what is this going to give us? Like this? You probably need to set up some sort of uh, if else mm -hmm. type of field that like renders the button one version of text or another depending on whether I think the dog or he's just working on being better. <laughs> Where's the best place to do that? Hugo? Oh, no, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, Backticks only for inherent signal or do it also even for inherent signal? Backticks are a JavaScript concept where when you have a string that you want to interpolate things into, you use backticks instead of regular quotes. And because inner HTML is a string, and we're trying to interpolate stuff into it, we use backticks. But not inner If it was inner text, and we're trying to put some text, and we need to interpolate stuff into it, then we also use backticks. If we don't need to interpolate, and we just have the one variable, then we don't need to use backticks. Gavin. But you did just before. What? Hmm? Like you see how you how dog that name. See how you did that? So Here? Not, yeah, because dog dot name is already a string. And I wasn't trying to interpolate anything else. Like if I wanted to do dog's name and then interpolate this variable, then yes, I would have to do that. All right. I have a question. Yes. About the image. Um, and there are quotes around the dog that image the URL. It's because that's how HTML elements behave. Yeah, so like, like for the source, it's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That is the reason. All right. So let's make a variable where we say good dog versus bad dog. Like we check if this Boolean is true, then we want to save the word good. And if it's false, we want to save bad. Yes, but it's because of the way that HTML elements behave, where image source has to have quotes. Otherwise, it would break. And we can try that after we get this to work and see what happens. All right, I'm curious as well. All right, so let's make our our variable. What should we call it? Hmm? Let's call it. Good or bad? So we're going to check if dog dot is good is a truthy value. If it is, then we'll set this to be a string that says good. And if it's not, then we're going to set it to be a string that's bad. There's a shortcut way that you can do this as a ternary. Does anyone know? Hugo knows. So a ternary has something like this and like this in it. Okay. Does anyone know? Yeah. Who knows? Who wants to say it? Yeah. What is the thing that we want to have? Sorry. All right. So it, it, you would put the dog good part on the left. So this is the thing that we're checking, if it's true or false, if it's truthy or falsy. And then 
after that, if it is true, that's what we put. So what is this going to be? Uh, true. true. I heard Mackenzie say it. Good. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see our example. Don't call them bad. Wait. There we go. Our problem is so paranoid that they didn't call them bad. <laughs> All right. So this is going to evaluate and then set this variable to whether it evaluates to this or this. So then what do we want to put in our button? Oh, that variable with inside the, the probe. All right, will this work now? Or do we need to do anything else? There's a potential for it working. Well, mm -hmm. is there a button here? No, that's up, that's up in the top. Oh, so that button does, yeah. The event listener that we've set up right now is just in order to make that. this appear. Okay. Let's just get it to show a person, then we can yeah. do this good or bad one. Do we think that this will show up if I try it? It's a high probability, but the way you're asking is the question. Why are they all bad? I don't know. Why did you make them all bad? Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think they're all bad. Mm -hmm. you need to check the database. There's no way he's bad. Look at him. It's, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's, not it's wrong. We gotta switch it. No, no, but that's what we have. It's this right now. I don't want it to be dog. We're gonna be let. No. No, look at the. It's a dog that is. Oh, we tell you. I don't think it needs to be let, just because we're doing this. No, you have to. Only once. You have the wrong. Oh, because it's false. Yeah. So it's okay. always it, because this is undefined. Is good doesn't exist on in our database. We have is yeah. good dog. So it's always undefined. So it's always getting evaluated to bad dog. That's a cool example. All right. <laughs> Dago, Lucifer. Yeah. Cool. What? <laughs> Change that now in the database. That's our next step. <laughs> no, you hard put that one in before we go. I didn't do such on. a thing. All right. So we did this. User clicks. We get our dog info. All of this stuff appears, right? Why is the. Um, yes. Like, go to the page. This page? The web page. Yes. Like, we said that to be a button, but it doesn't look like one. Is that Which? the screen that we're looking at? or Which button? The bad dog button. Oh, yeah, it is a button. It's like not appearing as a button. You're right. Now but it is a button. It's, so it's just, just the screen. screen. Okay. All right. So let's look at our next step. We've accomplished step one. We've accomplished step two. We've now accomplished step three. Now things are starting to get even trickier. So we want to do this part now. Toggle good dog. So when you click that button that we saw, good dog or bad dog, it should change the database to reflect the other thing. So that's like what a toggle does. It goes back and forth. So if it says good dog, that means that dog is good. If I click it, I want to say, no, this is a bad dog. So I want to change my database to show that that's a bad dog. And I also want the text on the button to now update and tell me that that's a bad dog. So how do I? I do, I do. It's a good idea. Where do I add that in? Uh, you can just add it like below the back tick that says, you know, yeah, that, that's a good line to do it. So just like this? Um, I mean, you might want to define the button. Like you gotta find the button. You can't just be like button. Okay. How do I find this button? I would, I would throw an ID on it. 
Just ID? ID equals whatever you want to be. Data ID. Data ID? Why do we want data ID? Because we don't want to break it up. I don't think you need it because there's only one dollar. It depends, right? Are we going to break our, uh, our function, like our fetch function we're about to do, um, into another function, or can we just do it all in one? I think we need it because it's going to make a path request, so we just need to run slash ID to mm -hmm. We definitely need it because we're going to need to know which dog we're trying to fix. I know, but what I'm saying is, and you didn't like this earlier, if you just build out the entire fetch, like the, the fetch function within this show dog info function, like literally, if you just at the end of button dot add event listener, like, uh, and then that that squiggly in parentheses, like hit mm -hmm. enter a couple times, and then just wrote a function like patch dog goodness, and then wrote a function in that function. Like, we'll do that I'm separately. Like, we're doing like inception mm -hmm. function. Is there a downside to having it be data ID? There is no downside. Let's do data ID. So, data ID. There's kind of two different things going around here. One is we're discussing how we're going to find this button and grab this button. And the other thing we're discussing is how we're going to know which dog to patch. So data ID is actually going to help us figure out which dog we want to patch. And that would be like the purpose of using data ID. Two buttons. What would you do in this case? Just the one case? Then I would give them separate IDs. Because I would assume those two buttons are doing different things. And you will find it with the get attribute, right? You can just do get element by ID. In this situation, there's kind of like a clever way that we can get this button with actually using query selector. Does anyone know? And actually, this can be a const because every time we're creating a div, it's just going to represent that one dog. There's going to be just that one button. So this stuff is not going to change. Does anyone know how I can grab the button? I love it. Because logically, this works the same as document.querySelector, except instead of looking on the whole document, you're looking on that particular dog info div, which you have access to here. So what do I want to give info? You can see? Exactly. Because there's going to be just the one button on this dog info div. So let's see if we can console log it. I think it would also work if it was document dot query selector and then you did dog info div right before the button. Like dot dog info div space button. Maybe. Or if it works the same we might we might do this. Before the button? Yeah. Here, let's see. So we got this button, ID 8. We got this button, ID 10. This is like a very clever way to do things, so I definitely want you guys to have access to it. We can also try your way. What was your suggestion? I think it's. It, I think it would be this, and then what? Is it? And then oh, button. Wait, wait, no, it's it's no longer. It's off the hashtag. Yeah, this is longer. I think this would work. No, um, I don't think we need that as a hashtag. Well, query selector. If you're working with IDs, I think we need the hashtag. So are you trying to put the variable ID? Let's see if this works. I'm curious. It works. But let's keep this way, because I want you guys to be familiar with this way. All right. So we got our button. What do we need to do? OK. On what event? Exactly. And maybe now would be a good time to like write a different function for what happens when we click. What do we want to happen when we click? Change dog goodness. All right, any other name ideas for this variable? 
update dog. Let's just do toggle dog because that's what we're doing. We're just changing this. It's good or bad from one to the other. All right. So we have all this stuff. How do we check that this event listener actually works? Console log where? All right. So what do we need? We need a function toggle dog. And what does that take as an argument? Nice. You guys got this. We'll try console log. Event. How about ice cream? Yeah. That's fine. We're just checking that it's connected, right? So I click bad dog. I see event ice cream. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, what do we want to do now? What are we trying to do? Change dog status from good to bad or vice versa. So what kind of pieces of information do we need? The variable, good or bad. Good or bad variable. Where can we get this? We can, can we get, yeah, we can get it from the event. Where is it exactly though? Let's see. Console log event. All right, guys. I never use it. Maybe it's a bad habit for me. We're on this event. What does event target get me? Everything. Yeah, it gets me the button that I clicked on. So if we were to console log event target, I would just see that HTML element. That's the button. And where on that element can we see good or bad? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Let's try event dot target dot inner text so, can I log bad dog good dog so how do we get just the first part the first part wants to be that first word yeah we want to know if it's good or bad Um, would it be easier to just access the dog object and then find out whether the good dog or bad dog is true or false and go from there instead of finding one word and two words straight? You can, but then you're going to require two fetch requests because you're going to have to first fetch that dog, see if it's good or bad, and then fetch again to do the update. But if we already have access here, why don't we just I'm saying grab. we should just build it all up in the earlier function and we have access to all that <laughs> stuff already and we don't have to mess with any of it. I think there's a very simple one-line way to grab the word good or bad. You can do it using slice. Does anyone know? Stephen knows. From... Okay. So, if we wanted to have a variable called good or bad, and we wanted to see if that button currently says good or bad, we can use this because this gives us good dog or bad dog. 
You can do a dot slice. What should I put here? What will this give us? That will give us the first letter. Yeah, can you just put, can you do not slice? Isn't there a different one where you can just put the space? Wait, that gives us the first letter, then we got it now. That's true. Yeah, I think you, hang on. Sarah, I think you mean split, where you can split it on the spaces and then grab the first word. There's yeah, a lot of ways to do that, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is like more algorithmic style. With slice, it can take a negative argument. So like slicing from the back. And since we know the back will always be one, two, three, four, five, these last five characters, you can also just tell it like negative five. I think this might work. So let's try it. Yeah, so it's giving us the word. Well, you can also do it the way we had before, right? It's G or D. So yeah. The first letter. Because if you're slicing just the first letter, you know whether you're going to work good or bad. It's more robust. That, to me, is a little bit slappy. Andy, you had a question earlier. What was it? Here? No, because this is happening in a completely different function. Can you assign it, uh, the variables to a string, like the dog in the strings, and then you, you would extend it with the sub variables? If that value is the dog mm -hmm. equal to that the dog string, mm -hmm. then that's true. If not, it would be false. It would mm -hmm. to the second variable be that. Mm -hmm. to. Yeah, we can do something like that. That's kind of like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So we can totally do that. No, we don't need to do that. That's fine. Yeah. So I guess going back to what we're trying to do, what information we need. So we need a good or bad variable, like what that dog currently is. And we can get this off the event. We already got this information. We also need to know which dog to update. How do we get that? All right. OK. Event.target.dataset. Do we have an ID there? Yeah. yeah, we have an ID there. So we know which dog. Let's just double check that the ID is coming through. Nice. All right. Cool. So now that we have the information we need, what do we need to do? There's kind of two steps. Yeah, change the front end and change the back end. Yes. Well, toggle dog function is going to take an event because it's a callback from an event listener. So there's no way to just tell it, take the dog instead, but you can get the dog because event has the ID on it. But can't you pass it in as an argument when you add the event listener? Like oh, using sure. an arrow function? Here? Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I haven't really done it that way. I'll have to look at what Nikki did. I believe you that it's possible. But I view this way as a pretty simple way to do things because you can just grab the ID off of the dog. All right. So what are we trying to do next? How do we change either of these things? OK. Are we doing optimistic or pessimistic? Let's do pessimistic. OK. So then we're going to do the pessimistic first. All right, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. Yes, you will. Can you, can you briefly explain the difference between optimistic rendering and pessimistic rendering? So, all right. 
Think about it in theory. You have a database. It has information in it. You really want to make sure that your website reflects the information that's in your database. So right now we're about to change what's in our database. We're about to change a dog from being a good dog to a bad dog. We could take a risk. This is where we're being optimistic. And we can change our front end before we actually change the database. And that's optimistic rendering. As opposed to pessimistic rendering where you really want to make sure the database is accurate. So you're going to change the stuff in the database before you reflect it on the front end. Being more robust. When you change it on the back end, you're like manually changing it on the back end? Yeah, like any into the database and delete something or just changing like that, or are you talking about using the functions? We're using fetch, which will manually send the request and go update it. That's optimistic or that's pessimistic? That's pessimistic because you're going in the database first. There's even ways where if you want it to be robust, you can check the response. Did the response come back successful? If it came back successful, the response status would start with a 200. So changing it on the front end would be optimistic because you're taking a risk. So you're saying like, we're just gonna change the front end and trust that our request works. Either way is valid. It doesn't really matter which order you do it in, especially since we're not teaching you how to check that like the status came back correctly, the request worked, and only then do it. So for our purposes, it doesn't matter too much, but let's just start with going into the database. So that would be fetch request back to our same link. Do we need anything else? Yes. What kind of request are we making here? Mm -hmm. And again, always rely on your readme because it's going to tell you what kind of request to do. Maybe not every API can handle certain requests. So if you go through the readme, it'll tell you what kind of request it can handle and what it wants you to do. All right. So what am I putting here? Oh, method post, method text. Good. Body. Does it need a body? So if we're patching, what do we need to tell it? Yes. Yes. So patching and posting needs a body because you're sending an object. Yes. Are you gonna make it? No. Can you grab me a charger? No. Okay. I don't know where you get one put up here though. So body. What goes on our body? It's gonna be the I mean, Well no, it's gonna be what we need to change the um that our bad status to. Yeah, so and it needs to be a Boolean, right? So you should um So what should we do, Sarah? So normally it's an object, and then with the value, and then the key is going to be its good value, and then the value is going to be true or false. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can have like another variable here that actually tells us a boolean if the dog is currently good or bad. Right. So wait. In the thing you thought we made before in the inner HTML, can you scroll up? Mm -hmm. So, Okay. So I would recommend doing something kind of like this that we did here, where we set a Boolean, like, is good. Because our patch request going into the database cannot handle the word good or bad. It has to be true or false. So maybe we can check. 
was the word good or bad. So like good or bad. Maybe it was equal to good. And if so, that means is good dog. Okay. Otherwise, that means is bad dog. So then when we make our body, we can set the new is good dog to the opposite of what it was before, right? Does that make sense? What else do we need for our body to work? Um, All right. What else? Headers. What goes in our headers? Maybe data. Thank you, Jackie. Let's see. I might have it in here somewhere. Like this? Yep. All right. Perfect. Is it C and type have to be capital? What? Um. Does it have to be capital here? Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Okay. Yes. All right. Confirm. So then, let's see if this worked. Let's see if this fetch request worked. What is going to come back as a response if it worked? Not an object, some internet thing, but we can turn it into an object. And then let's console log it. All right. So let's zone in on a dog, Mr. Bonkers. He is a good dog. We click Mr. Bonkers. We click. Bad dog. So now is good dog is set to false. And let's confirm in our database. It's now set to false. Yep. So this update has happened. How do we change the text on the button now that we've updated the database? So we still need a dot then because we still want this to happen after, right? So how do I do it? You you were on the right track. I guess you actually probably don't even need this. So event dot target dot inner text. Which part are we changing? And what are we changing it? <coughs> Mm -hmm. Do we need some kind of variable maybe to help us? This one? Okay. So maybe maybe we need a variable that tells us the new status, right? And we can rely off the old status to determine what the new one should be. Or even just using this, right? Because this will tell us true or false. I think this way might be easier. So what should I put here? Is good dog. Is good dog. Okay, so this this tells me the status of the dog before I changed it, right? Mm -hmm. So if the dog is a good dog, this will say true. If the dog is a good dog, and this is true, and we need to change it to bad dog, what do I put here? This is what it should be after it changed. This is, this is going to be rendered on the button. This is going to be the text that we render on the button. Where are you defining is good dog? Is it still, it's good dog? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. So what do, what do I put here? Bad dog. True. This is just, exactly. This is just what I want to render on the button. Otherwise, I'm rendering good dog. All right, so now 
I'm changing the inner text, right? Yeah. You can just So it's checking, is the dog currently a good dog? This is the dog's status before we're trying to change it, right? So it's checking, is the dog a good dog? If that's true, then we want to change it to bad dog. So this is what the new status should be. And if it's false, and the dog is actually a bad dog, when we click that button, we want to change it to a good dog. Let's see this in action. So right now, Mr. Bonkers is actually a bad dog because remember we changed it. So if I refresh, I hit him again. Oh, he's a bad dog. We don't hit dogs. That was poor wording. All right, so if I click this, our database should change to true and hopefully, if we did things right, this button will change to good dog. Let's try it out. The button has changed. The database has also changed. Um, yes, Andy. Um, since we did it outside the promise, is it truly pessimistic rendering? Because doesn't it that fetch like asynchronous? So it just like. It's not truly pessimistic rendering. If you really wanted it to be pessimistic rendering, you can check if this response.status was successful. And only if this response came back successful then you can change the inner HTML. Or you can do a dot catch in the end and catch the errors. But that's a lot of information and more than you need to know at this point. It's good to keep it in the back of your mind, but we do not expect you to do this for the code challenge. So optimistic rendering is okay. Wait, the last challenge definitely has been rendered. Where you had to check statuses? Where we had to do rendering. Yeah, but we're not checking if the fetch actually oh, okay. truly happened. Oh, okay. I guess if you do a dot then and give it a callback, because we're not, we don't really care about passing back this response. We're not really going to use it. We're just changing the status. Oh. I think this would still work. But this time, it's actually happening synchronously after the change. So let's see. He's a good dog. Now he becomes a bad dog. Never. Yeah, so totally valid. Change back. <laughs> so now you have, you have this. All right, so we did step three. Or step four, actually. The last part is just extra credit. So I'm not sure how much time we have to go into it right now. Let's see. So filter good dogs. When a user clicks the filter good dogs button, which is the one that we see up here, it starts off saying false. If a user clicks it, the text on the button says filter good dogs on, and then it changes the span of dogs to only show the good dogs instead of both good and bad dogs. So that's our task. How would we approach this? Create a function? Yeah. All right. Call it what? Filter dogs. Why would it take an event? All right, what are we clicking? So we're going to click this piece here. Yes. So we do want to grab this button at some point, attach an event listener to it, and have this function that we're currently writing be a callback when we hit that button. So the idea is good dog filter. Someone help me remember that. All right, so let's put that button here. Const good dog filter. Oh no. 
<laughs> and so we want to attach the event to here. No, because they're also completely separate buttons. Right. This so, is this so button. Like if the two I think that if you had two event listeners on the same place, it wouldn't be a problem. They would just, both of those things would be happening. It might be a problem if those two things had contradictory things happening inside of them. But also we're adding the event to a different body right. from before. So a click event, right? And what was the function that we're writing called? All right, what do we need to do? Okay, let's check that this is working when we hit the button. It works. The event is connected. Let's think about this. I'm going to give you guys some hints. When we load the page, we fetch all of the dogs. Then we render a dog bar. And our render dog bar function takes all of the dogs that we fetch. You can also just filter the dogs and then reuse this render dog bar and pass in filtered dogs instead. So that's like the use for these kind of functions, that there's specific pieces broken up for us. So we can think about somehow incorporating this, like calling fetch dogs again, but this time our render dog bar can have a filtered version of dogs passed in. But that's getting ahead of ourselves because we also need to check if our filter says on or off. So how do we do that? Can we use slice again? Exactly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen characters before we get to what we need. So we can start slicing. But on only has two characters. So it's the beginning part that's going to be the same no matter what. We can. We can also do that. So we can split it on the colon. Then we'll still get a space, though. That's the colon space. We can. So like this. Yeah. And then take the second element yeah. like that. So let's see. So this will be const on or off. And we can console log on or off. So I click this, it's off. It's giving us what we need, right? So lots of different ways to do it. If we did it with slice, we would start at like 18. And since it goes to the end, you don't need to provide a second argument. All right, now what? So again, there's multiple things that need to happen here. If this button says on, when we click it, we want to change the text to off. 
if this button says off and we click it, we want to change the text to on. So how do we do that? Okay, so what would it say? Then Uh, well, we want to let's uh, just change the text part. Actually, wouldn't it be just on and instead of? You can show all the ducks here, right? That's what you want to do. Right now, we're focusing on just changing the text of the button. So, if the button currently says off and we want to change its inner text to now say on, uh, so what do I do? So what did it say? Filter good dogs, right? Else? <coughs> Same thing, but off, right? So let's see if that piece works. This part works, right? Cool. Now we need to think about what we're showing. And luckily, we already have a function that fetches all of the dogs for us and then renders all of the dogs. So in one situation, we can just use that function the way it is. Like if the person wants to turn off the filter, to show all of the dogs. So that would be here, right? Or it's not the right function. So this is just our usual behavior. But what about here? What do we do here? So what does fetch dogs give us? It actually, exactly, it gives us an array of all of the dogs because we've already res.json it. Right, so we're getting dogs. How do we use a filter in JavaScript? What does filter take? And what are we checking? This is fine, because this is a truthy value. So now we have, now we have an array of only good dogs. So now we can call, and this is why it was so nice to have a function that renders a dog bar and takes in dogs, because now we've manipulated which dogs we've given this function. So we can give render dog bar the dogs. It's getting sloppy. So what do we get out of this? Mm -hmm. All right, shall we test it out? All right, so I hate to disappoint, but this is the current behavior. It's just adding more and more? Yes, it's adding more and more. So I would just recommend anytime someone clicks filter dots, the first thing we do, we just clear the dog bar entirely. So how do I clear the dog bar? Dog bar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So just get rid of any HTML that's currently in there. And now it's working. That's it. 
And that's just extra credit. Change them all to good so that every time you break No, we don't have time for that. I want you guys to go enjoy lunch. I'll post this recording and I'll push this code so you can go over it slowly. Thank you. Thank you.